Hi guys, welcome to Garden Theory. Today we're going to be talking about color specifically and how to use color in landscape design when we're going out designing our landscapes and flower beds. If you have a color wheel, be sure to bring that along with you. And we're going to be talking about the basics of color theory, color, different color palettes, how to create your own color palettes, and we'll talk a little bit about what makes colors unique. So before we dive into different color palettes in landscape design and designing flower gardens, we're going to talk a little bit about what makes a color unique to gain a little bit of language when talking about color. Now, I'm definitely not an expert in color theory. I'm just going to be covering the basics today. But first, I'm going to talk about our basic color wheel. So you can find these at a lot of arts and craft stores. And we're not going to dive too much into the different kinds of color wheels. We're going to stick with the basic one for this episode. So we kind of all learned in elementary school that our primary colors are blue, yellow, and red. And that's what we're going to be using for this video. And so when we mix those colors, right, yellow and red gets us orange, blue and red gets us purple or violet, and then blue and yellow get us, gets us green. And then by combining those, we get the secondary colors um, around the entire color wheel. Since this video is going to be focused on garden design instead of painting, uh, one of the things that I would like to bring up, especially when we're outside, there diff there's different ranges of color. Not every blue flower is the same. Not every red flower is the same. There's going to be different uh, varieties of color. So we're going to start off by talking about three different categories of color. So the first one is value. And that's essentially how light or dark the color is. So if we take our color red right here in the middle, and if we add white to it, it becomes pink. But if we add black to it, it becomes a darker color down here. So that's essentially what value is. It's, it's adding black or white to the color. And so you can have a garden space of one color, but have different values of dark red to light red to pink um, to maroon and all sorts of stuff all within one color. And so that's how value is described. And that's essentially as if you're taking your landscape and you're turning your image to black and white. That's the value you would see. Now next up is the hue. And so the hue is the range of what color the flower is based on its location on the color wheel. So every color is a different hue of light because that's what we see right it's the reflection of light off of something that gives us the color so the hue is basically describing uh what is the um where is its spot on the color wheel um and so that's what hues are you can have different hues of red purple and blue um, and everything kind of transitions into one another there's no really hard lines in color and the last one is saturation um, so saturation is essentially how rich the color is. Is it very saturated red or is it a bit more lighter um, going into pastels type colors or is it kind of muddy? Um, it's kind of dark, um, got a little bit of color in there, but it's a pretty muddy color. And so that's essentially how you go. You go from muddy to pastels to saturated. Um, but those are going to be the main terms that we're going to be using in today's video. As so first off, uh, before we go into specific examples, I wanted to uh, define some of the main color palettes that you can use. So the first one is monochromatic, which is essentially just using one color on your color wheel. So ex for example, using all red flowers. Now you can use a variety of different values, saturations of red in your design, which gives it variety, uh, but you're all but it's all under one color. I may have mispronounced some of these words, but the next one is analogous, uh, which is using uh, three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So for this one, it'd be using red orange, red, and then red violet. So those would be three colors next to each other on the color wheel, and you would only use these three colors, and again, different tints and, and values of each color. And the next one is complementary colors. So those are colors on the opposite side of the color wheel. So yellow and purple, red and green, and blue and orange are all complementary colors, as well as as you move your way down, uh, each one has a color on the opposite side of the color wheel. So the next one is triadic, which would be like red, yellow, blue, or orange, green, violet. 
And so those are using three colors that are equal distance to each other on the color wheel. Our last one is tetratratic, if I'm saying that correctly. And that's essentially making a rectangle on the color wheel. So it's using two split complementary colors to each other. And so those are the main color schemes. Um, there are more besides these basic ones, but that's kind of your starting point on creating color schemes. Now we're gonna dive into a few examples and kind of talk with you about how you create your own color scheme when you're designing a flower garden or any landscape in general. So another example of a color scheme is using what some people will call warm and cool tones. So warm tones typically refer to anything that's red, yellow, and orange, and cool tones refer to anything that's green, blue, and purple. So a lot of times you can provide contrast by having something that's maybe really mostly warm tones with a few cool tones intermixed and vice versa, because those two colors uh, reflect different emotions that people have. Um, warm tones tend to be more exciting and cool tones tend to be a bit more calming. So that's another way that you can play with different colors. All right, so I've come up with a few examples of some gardens that I have been to um, to kind of describe some of these color schemes that we have going on. Um, so this is our first image. As you can kind of guess, there's kind of two main colors. Uh, but it's this yellow from the Black Eyed Susans and the purple from these annual heliotropes. Um, and we also have a little bit of pink from some petunias, I believe, and as well as this kind of kind of greenish purple color that's really muddy from the uh, grasses. Um, but you can kind of see this is mainly a complementary color scheme with the yellow and purple as our main contrast. Um, so that's one example of a color scheme. Yellow and purple are pretty often used because those are pretty easy colors to find when you're at the garden center looking for good colors to add to your space. So I think that's a really good starting point when you're experimenting with color schemes. Yellow and purple seems to be a really good one for a lot of people. So this next one, we have these red kind of maroon, almost coleus in the background with these really nice light pink um, geraniums and again with that purple uh, heliotrope. So if we're looking at our color wheel again, um, I know I'm, I'm a little small on the image right now, uh, but just looking at it, we have kind of a red, a really muddy red color with the pink, which is a different uh, tint of red, and then the purple. So we kind of almost have an of analogous uh, color scheme here with the three colors across the color wheel. Uh, the only thing that we probably would need is maybe a bit of red violet. But again, this is mainly three different colors. Um, so this is another way you can use colors that are pretty closely related to each other on the color wheel to create a, a pleasing um, arrangement. So this is the next one has a bit more of a variety of different colors on it. So we have five total colors here. I know something I, I forgot to mention earlier um, with the color green. Um, that's kind of our base color when we're talking about gardening. So a lot of times that green from the foliage is kind of pushed to the background in our minds. A lot of times we're just focusing on the color of the flower. So that's why I'm not including the color green in some of these arrangements. Uh, but this one's an example and it is an exception because we have this lime green kind of chartreuse type color from the sweet potato vines in this. And so that uh, attracts our eye. So that's why it's a part of this color palette. But we got a lot of different pinks and purples in this one. And again, we have the yellow from the Black Eyed Susans. And then we have a little bit of orange. Um, they're a little hard to see. Um, they're mostly in the background. But again, we got purple, pink, and then orange. And then with the lime green kind of being that contrast against a lot of those warmer colors. If we had a bit more blue in here, we would almost have a terratic color scheme, but it's mainly a, a warm analogous color scheme with a bit of that light green contrast to the warmer colors. So this is an interesting one, but you kind of see how all these colors um, pair pretty nicely with one another. So here's our next one. So this one, again, kind of got three main colors that are related to each other. We kind of got this blue, blue violet going on with the floss flower. Then we have the nice rich uh, red violet color and then we have a bit more of this uh, light 
pastel purple. And so those are three analogous colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And so that creates another uh, pleasing um, arrangement uh, with the cool colors. So here's another one uh, that we got here. So this is another, uh, a lot of purples and pinks in this one. So a lot of analogous colors. Uh, but again, we got that lime green from the, uh, excuse me, from the sweet potato vine, as well as some dark green from some of this parsley that's in the middle right there. A little hard, a little hard to see, but it's right here. And so that lime green that's got that yellow in it, it kind of contrasts against that purple and and the rest of the flowers. So that why it, that's why it pops a little bit more. Um, and it's also a very light hue when everything else is uh, fairly dark besides for our pink colors, which kind of pair nicely with the with the yellow in that. And so again, we got analogous colors in our flowers, but in the foliage, we have a bit of complementary colors in it. So that's a way you can kind of combine uh, the color schemes together like that. So here's the next one. This one's a pretty vibrant one. So again, we have three main colors. So we have orange. We got a nice, uh, pretty rich, saturated pink, which is which would be uh, near our red on the color scheme, and then we got a nice uh, blue, blue violet. Um, so this is almost a uh, tri triadic, uh, but they're a little closer than a true one. So this is a pretty fun uh, color scheme. I think it's pretty bold overall. I think this is a pretty fun one. Um, this is a good way, you know, you can kind of break the rules a little bit. You don't always have to stick with one of the, uh, the base, uh, color schemes that I described with before. This one kind of hops around on the color wheel, but in a pretty good way. Um, cause the blue and that salvia is a pretty complementary color to the orange, but then you got that pink, which kind of connects the two, um, extremes together. Um, that's how I would probably describe this color scheme. And so yeah, so it creates a very bold and striking color scheme that way. And I think this might be our last one, uh, but this is our last color scheme. So I got a lot of colors at play on this one. So we have a lot of different purples from that verbena in the foreground and the uh, zinnias. Uh, but we also have this kind of darkish uh, purpley green, which is a very muddy color again. And then we also have a bit of that silver blue color from the Dusty Miller, uh, which kind of goes with that darker uh, purple color again. And then we got a little bit of that yellow green again from a coleus in the back, which kind of is a complementary color to those purples with the yellow that's in it. And then we have a bit of orange as well, which is another kind of pop against the blue of that Dusty Miller, as well as the, uh, the black uh, sweet potato vine. Uh, so overall, this is another kind of fun one. I think we got a lot of fun colors at play in this one, as well as a lot of fun different textures. And so this is just another example of how you can do a color scheme together. So I hope you enjoyed uh, walking through these. I hope these ones gave you a little bit of inspiration of different colors that you can try. And we'll return back to the rest of our video. Another interesting challenge with color when it comes to landscape designers is that your landscape has to look good in all four seasons and you can create different color palettes depending on the season with the same landscape design. So it's pretty interesting. Um, I find it as the most unique medium because you can always, um, like with painting and something else like that, uh, you know, once you have your colors on the paper, you know, those are the the colors that are staying. Uh, but with landscape design and gardening, uh, the colors you pick on, and your overall uh, colors in your landscape, it's different from week to week almost. So it's a very more vibrant, alive, and energetic space to create and design with. Um, and that's something that I really enjoy about landscape design because um, we can create things uh, that have one color palette in the spring but your garden shifts over the year into the fall and has a whole different color palette. Um, so um, that's one of my favorite things when designing um, in general is designing plants with seasonal interest in mind. Because um, you can have one plant, say, 
uh, like peonies that are your main showy thing in the spring. But in the fall, you can have your Black Eyed Susans be the main center stage. And those are two completely different colors. Um, and you can create whole different color palettes just between your seasons. So sometimes with landscape design, instead of designing for four se for the four seasons of the year, you're actually designing for 26 seasons. 26 two-week periods throughout the entire year where you may have different flowers that are in their height uh, every single one of those two-week periods. So I'm not saying you have to des design your garden space for 26, uh, 26 seasons, uh, but this is something to consider. Um, especially if you're using native flowers and, and, a, and a wide variety of different flowers. This is something to consider. Another thing that landscape designers have to consider, um, not only just with their beautiful colors and things that you like, um, but a lot of times we have to also be ecologically uh, minded as well because um, we are considering the needs of your native bird populations, uh, insects as well. Insects is probably one of the bigger ones and rodents and, and mammals and all sorts of things. So there's so many different things that you uh, put together in, in landscape design. Um, for me it's just extremely fascinating how many different um, inputs and, and outlets that people have and there's so many different opinions. Um, and there's so many right ways to do something. Um, because you can have the same set of problems on a site and you can have 10 people take a look at it and all 10 of them come up with 10 different solutions that are all viable solutions. So it's really interesting to see um, the creative aspect in landscape design uh, within the framework of all these decisions that we have to make. So that's one of my uh, favorite things about landscape design. And even though we're talking about color today, I kind of want to just talk a little bit about different perennial plants that you can use to create different color palettes at different times of the year. So I know sometimes all this information that you need to create a really pretty and beautiful garden design, it can be a lot to intake. Um, so I definitely recommend having a, a written plan on what you want to do. And if you want to learn more about how to create a landscape design for your own personal property, I did a whole video talking about the seven steps on how you can do that, and I'll have it linked above my head. I definitely recommend to go and give that a watch if you want to learn more about this process. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to talk about some of the different plants that I would recommend. So I'm going to mix in some native and non-native plants, but one of those really good early spring bloomers is golden ragwort. It's a native perennial plant uh, that grows well under trees. Um, creates a beautiful yellow carpet in the spring. Uh, you can pair it nicely with Virginia bluebells that will bloom around that same time also. Um, if you want a good early uh, or an early late uh, winter bloomer you can always do hellebores or latent roses. Uh, I believe those are non-native but they create a really beautiful um, flower uh, in that time of year and then the rest of the year they create a pretty nice ground cover with their kind of unique kind of broad shaped leaves. Um, alliums are another good kind of late to early summer bloomer as well as all your bulbs are really good for that spring bloomer and you can pretty much get any colors of those. Blue false indigo is another good spring bloomer uh, that's pretty vibrant uh, for your Early summer, midsummer stuff like coneflower, bee balm, uh, phlox is another good one. Um, and then moving on into your late summer, early fall, that would be like your black eyed Susans, your asters. You could also do a variety of grasses like uh, northern sea oat, starts looking really good in the fall, as well as like your pansies and violas for your fall to, to the early winter stuff. So that's kind of how you can transition back to your hellebores after your pansies and stuff. It's a little tough, um, you know, in your midwinter stuff, but you can do things. Uh, this is more of a shrub, but you can do uh, like witch hazel. It's a good late fall to early winter one uh, that can kind of bridge that gap. I think paper bush is another good one around that same time, but I think witch hazel is a bit more showy than paper bush. At least from the ones that I've seen. 
Um, but those are B ones. I think camellas are a good late winter one as well. Uh, but those those are all just plants that are just coming to mind. I didn't have a, a pre-organized list. Uh, but those are all ones I could think of that would go across your entire calendar year. But again, you could create all sorts of different color palettes based off of off of those ones. So that's just an example of how you can plan for all 26 two-week seasons in your year. Um, but again, sometimes it's a lot to process. Um, if you're new at it, I would recommend just starting with your four seasons. Have at least something that's going to be your main spring interest, your main summer interest, your main fall, and then your main winter. And again, stems can be a winter one as well, like red twig dogwoods could be your winter interest. So there's a lot of creative ways that you can find things to do that way. So thank you for watching this video uh, about color theory, and I hope that y'all enjoyed it quite a bit. I know this is more of the basic rundown on how colors work. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if we want to do more of a deep dive, I'll have to do a bit more research into it. Uh, but comment down what are some of your favorite color schemes that you like to see in different gardens. And thank you again for watching this video. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe. And thank you for watching Garden Theory. Mm -hmm.